Hey everybody, welcome back to our summer book, Penguin Puzzle, and we're up to chapter 7. And if you remember, at the end of chapter 6, the kids were turned into penguins, and they were swimming, and they were in danger, because there was a leopard seal right there stalking them, and leopard seals can eat penguins. So that was Phoebe up there saying, yikes. And she's going to warn the kids. That's where we are to start of chapter 7. So let's get started. Is that all right, Pete? Pete says, yeah. He's going to read with us, okay? <clears throat> I couldn't waste another second. The leopard seal was going in for the kill. I had to warn the others. Dorothy Ann, Tim, Carlos. I started to scream their names one by one. The words came out of my bill like a loud braying sound. I was talking and braying at the same time. I hopped up and down on the icy cleft and kept braying. Finally, Dorothy Ann saw me. Right away, she knew something was wrong. She took off for the cliff, waving her flippers at the others. The other kid penguins shot through the water after her. And I showed you the picture already. That was Dorothy Phoebe warning all the others. Okay. With their black colored backs turned to the sea, the penguins were hard to see in the water. The seal lost sight of them. It stopped swimming and searched the water. By the time it had found Dorothy Ann again, she was leaping from the water onto the ice shelf. Dorothy Ann gave a bray of relief. Arnold, Keisha, Carlos, Tim, Wanda, and Ralphie all hopped up on the cliff. Everyone was happy to be back on safe ground. Wow, that was close, Dorothy Ann said. It's a cold, cruel world out there, Tim added. We hung out We hung out on the cliff for a while. There were hundreds of the deli penguins around us. They gave us some strange looks, but otherwise just ignored us. You know what I think is weird, Carlos said. What, Wanda asked. Well, what's really weird is the smell, Carlos said. What smell, Wanda asked. That's what I mean, Carlos said. I don't even smell the guano anymore. Remember the guano was the poop smell they had smelled? Well, maybe that's because we're not human anymore, Wanda said with a sniffle. What if we never get back to the magic school bus, Arnold asked. I tried to think of something hopeful to say. Miss Frizzle will save us, and Uncle Cecil, I told Arnold. You just wait and see. Meanwhile, Dorothy Ann said, Let's check out some of the penguin nests. I still want to see a baby chick. As usual, Dorothy Ann's mind was on science. We all waddled over to where dozens of penguins were babysitting their eggs. <clears throat> Two of the penguins seemed to be having a fight. Look, one is stealing a rock from the other one, Wanda said. Penguins do that, Dorothy Ann explained. I read that they have to compete for the best nesting sites. Remember, we learned they make their nest on the rocks. Rocky nest. Remember that? What do you mean, Wanda asked. Oh, right. I mean, Dorothy Ann corrected herself. Just then, a female Adelie penguin got off her nest. She waddled up to Arnold, and she barked some orders at him in penguin language. Arnold just stared at her. <clears throat> then she took her flippers, and pushed him towards her nest. No, no, Arnold protested. Protested, You've got the wrong guy. I'm not your penguin mate. The fing female penguin didn't pay much attention to Arnold's noises. She made him sit on top of her egg. Then she waddled away towards the water. She threw back a warning glance at Arnold, as if t telling him not to move. Looks like you can't get up until your wife gets back, Arnold. Tim said. You'd better keep those eggs nice and warm, Carlos. And they all laughed together. <laughs> better not leave me, Arnold begged. Please. It looked as if they were stuck babysitting a penguin egg. But when would the mother come back? Okay. There's Arnold and there's the other kids. And you can see the egg right there. He's sitting on the egg nest. Okay. Can you see it?
Meanwhile, back at the camp, Miss Frizzle was measuring the ice caps and taking notes. She saw Uncle Cecil come slipping and sliding across the ice. The look on his face was terrible. It spelled trouble. Cecil, the frizz gasped, what's wrong? My experiment backfired, Uncle Cecil moaned. I turned the kids into penguins. How did you do that, Miss Frizzle asked. I squirted them with my top secret formula. It was all an accident. Now they're penguins and I can't find them. Miss Frizzle thought for a moment. We've got a penguin puzzle that we have to solve. Then she added, maybe it takes one to know one. You mean, you mean, I should turn myself into a penguin? Uncle Cecil stammered. Do you have enough secret formula left? The Frizz asked. A whole bottle, Uncle Cecil answered. Well, hand it over, Miss Frizzle said, and get ready to waddle. Uncle Cecil took the last bottle of formula out of his briefcase and handed it to Miss Frizzle and shut his eyes. Seconds later, a large emperor, emperor penguin stood in front of Miss Frizzle. Liz took one look and jumped inside Frizz's pocket. Is that you, Cecil? Miss Frizzle asked in amazement. There's a picture. That's Uncle Cecil, and he's turned into a emperor penguin. I think so, Uncle Cecil's voice said. Then it turned into a penguin bray. Good luck, the Frizz called as Uncle Cecil waddled off. And then there's a little information about emperor penguins. They're the biggest, biggest penguin of all. They grow up to 3.7 feet tall and can weigh more than 60 pounds. That's about half the size of a human. Emperor penguins are the only penguins that breed during the cold, dark winter in Antarctica. After the female lays a single egg, she goes off to sea, and the male stays behind on land with the egg and keeps it warm on his feet or under a brood pouch for 72 days. That's a long time, isn't it? Okay, back to Uncle Cecil. Remember, he's looking for the kids. And now Uncle Cecil is also a penguin. Uncle Cecil headed toward a crowd of Adelie penguins. Phoebe, he called out, Arnold, Dorothy, Anne, Carlos. None of the penguins answered. Uncle Cecil kept walking from group to group. He had to fight off the urge to take a dip in the ocean. He knew he had to keep his mind on finding the kids. Just then, he walked by an Adelie penguin. A little Adelie chick was being fed by its parents. Uncle Cecil took notes to add to his research. And on the bottom it says, Adelie penguins um, take turns keeping their chicks warm and fed. While one watches the nest, the other goes into the ocean to catch food. The penguins carry the krill and fish back to the nest in their stomachs. Then they regurgitate it to feed their chicks. That's a little icky, isn't it? Uncle Cecil wandered through the Adeli colony for an hour. Then he had to give up. There were thousands of Adeli penguins, and none of them answered his call. Slowly, he waddled back to camp. He hated to tell Miss Frizzle the news, but he might not see Phoebe and the others again, ever. Okay, that's the end of Chapter 7. We're up to Chapter 8, and he still hasn't found the kids, so they're leaving us in suspense of what's going to happen. And Pete, I'm hoping that they find him. And that's what Pete says too. So that's it for chapter seven. See you next time. Bye.